And Alberta's NDP plans to change the law to prevent Conservative leadership candidate Jason Kenney from outing gay children. Education Minister David Egan says it would be against the law to reveal the identity of students who join a gay-straight alliance. Students make choices and, uh, you know, this is obviously a very uh, significant choice around gay straight alliances is sensitive and um, what is very insensitive is to suggest that you would out students who chose to join a gay straight alliance. Kenny and other United Conservative Party MLAs suggested parents should be told if their child joins such a peer support group. Students set up GSAs to help prevent bullying of LGBTQ students. Well, ahead of Orange Shirt Day tomorrow, students at Bishop Lloyd had the chance to learn more about what happened to the First Nations people of Canada during a dark time in our country's history. Darcy Ropchan reports. Orange Shirt Day started in the spring of 2013 at the St. Joseph Mission Residential School commemoration event. It was there where Phyllis Webstad was stripped of her clothing and her identity. My granny bought me a shiny new orange shirt to go to school in. When I got there, I was stripped, my clothing taken away, including my new orange shirt, and I never saw it again. Lloyd Minster Composite High School students were at Bishop Lloyd Middle School to shed light on the horrific abuse that Aboriginal children suffered at the hands of residential schools and what they can do to help reconcile that history. I think it's very important because when an adult tells a student something, they don't exactly, their whole attention isn't really there. And when it's more on kid to kid, they, they're they more likely to listen. Led by high school teacher Danae Bruce, the team of high schoolers has been spreading the message that all life matters. They're our future generation and it's really important for us to get the word out there what reconciliation is and what we can do to move forward with it. And it starts in our with our young people um, and our hope is that they educate, are educated on it because we hope it never happens again in Canada. The message wasn't lost on the students of Bishop Lloyd. It showed that that it's, it's important to recognize all, all, all cultures and everything to be respectful. It's important to recognize what First Nations went through when they went in residential schools. Darcy Ropchan, Newcap News. Motorcycle breakdowns weren't enough to stall Eugene Sagan from completing his near 10,000 kilometer Burger King run earlier this month. The trek to Prince Edward Island and back in honor of his son was able to raise $4,000 to add to the 17,000 from the Devon Sagan Memorial this summer. The trip took just over five days and 12 hours, made easier by the interactions Sagan had along the way. Just stopping talking to people along the way. Um, people would buy me lunch, they'd put fuel on my bike, uh, you know, they wanted to donate, some people gave money too as well. All the money raised will go to families with children in the midst of a medical crisis. It brings it personal to people that, you know, they know someone that has suffered or gone through it. And then we're all about the children. So when it comes to the children, that, uh, that's a whole other story in itself. Sagan plans to make the trip again, but this time with his wife and at a normal pace to take in some of the scenery. I'm the only guy that's ever gone to Prince Edward Island, drove on the island and left and still have no idea what it looks like. Plans are already underway for the fifth annual Devon Sagan Memorial in June of next year. Well, it was a beautiful clear sky on Thursday, the perfect night for some stargazing. Kira Lyons has more on the first of its kind event here in Lloydminster. College Park Elementary hosted an observatory night, opening up the use of their telescope for a night of education and exploration. We open it up to the public so that they can come and take a closer look at the moon, um, at the sun a little bit earlier in the evening, and uh, possibly some stars as the uh, sun continues to go down. I like to come to the observatory nights because I'm really interested about like space and the solar system, and I find it really fun, and I love looking through the telescope and being able to see what you can see. The telescope has the capability of looking and taking pictures of not only the stars, but close-up shots of the moon, the sun, and planets like Jupiter. It is a fun toy to explore and offers incredible educational opportunities as well. Giving them a, an understanding of our solar system and uh, our position in the solar system to possibly the, the, the hugest, you know, inspiring someone to be the next uh, Chris Hadfield. Wouldn't that be amazing to have somebody from Lloyd Minster be out in space in the International Space Station or uh, walking on the moon? or possibly to Mars. I think it means a great opportunity to learn about space and the solar system and get to look closer at it and explore it. The observatory nights provide Cornelius with the amount of interest from the public. 
gauging the prospect of making these events a regular thing. Grandmas, grandpas, parents, it, it, there, there is no age limit. Um, everybody can, can look through the telescope. Kira Lyons, Newcap News. Well, it's the last weekend of September and there are several events happening around the Midwest, including several fall suppers and a chance to check out Jammin' at the Jube for Autism. Heather Clagus with the details in this week's What's Happening. It's Culture Day tomorrow and the Lloydminster Cultural and Science Centre is getting in on the action. You can head out and take part in arts, science, culture exhibits. There's also going to be a community art project that you can take part in as well. Things run from 10 until 3 tomorrow at the Lloydminster Cultural and Science Centre and admission is free. Tomorrow night, a fantastic show is going to be on stage at the Vic Juba Community Theatre. It's jamming at the Jube in support of autism. This show is going to raise funds to help out Autism Canada and also raising awareness through some fantastic music. The Kenny Mac Band is going to be the house band backing up some great artists, including Pam Beacott, Jordan Pollard. The list of talent just goes on and on. You can get your ticket online, vicjubatheatre.ca. We want you to start your weekend off by winning. We've got a copy of Colin James' latest album, Hearts on Fire. He is a six-time Juno Award winner, and you can be a winner. All you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the music. And fall supper season continues this weekend. On Sunday, there's a couple different ones you can check out. All Curve is hosting theirs at the community hall, and there's also a fall supper in Cut Night. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Clegis, and that's what's happening. This is New Cap Sports. Rustlers women's volleyball is nearing season start and the team's got a full crew. Lance Phillips caught up with the team after a recent tournament and has this report. Upon walking into Lakeland Rustlers women's volleyball practice, there is one notable difference over last year's team. The sheer number of women on the court. Significantly more bodies than a year ago signifies a national championship win is certainly good for recruiting. Going through the recruiting process uh, it, uh, after Christmas last year, and uh, I had some pretty decent players that uh, were interested in coming, and um, was expecting to lose a number of uh, the players from last year. But uh, after the way that our, our season finished, uh, a few of the players decided, you know, that they wanted to take another kick at it. At a recent tournament held at Lakeland, the women were the butt end of heckling from other teams. Not surprising, and if anything, expected. Because of what we did last year, everybody's going to want to beat us. Uh, and for sure this past weekend, you know, everybody seemed to be a little bit louder, uh, you know, a little bit more obnoxious just to, with everything that they were doing. I mean, it's kind of exciting, you know, like, it's kind of cool to, like, walk around and say, yeah, well, you know, like, you have something that they want and that not everybody gets to experience. So it's kind of cool that way. I think it motivates us more. Yeah, I think we're just going to, like, stick together, like, play our game kind of thing and just, like, block everything out everything out we didn't let anything like bother us at nationals or whatever and we're just stick together and when things get tough we lean on each other and compared to last year's starting point this crop of talented women believe they're well ahead of the 2016-17 version we're definitely a, a different team than we were last year i mean it's all the same girls but we came in with a totally different mindset i think that we're starting at a great point right now i feel like everyone the chemistry is good on the court already so i think that's a good pointer that we're gonna do well this year we're pretty solid we have a good core group going coming back or whatever and then the rookies are bringing a lot to the table too so i think we're we might be a little better than last year i think yeah lance phillips newcap sports lloydminster